topic, we are going to be creating a typography-based uh, portrait. We're going to use a face. You can find any face that you'd like. You can see here as I just kind of scroll through, a lot of these have a very similar look to them. Some of them have um, colors that were picked by the artist, while others have colors of the actual face uh, coming through. Ours will look a little bit more like what you see here in this cluster over here that I'm circling now. Uh, I'm just going to click it. This is the one that I had shown to you yesterday. So you're going to use words inside the face that relate to the person. They could be lines if they're an actress or actor uh, you know, that they use in a movie. They could be lyrics. They could be song titles if they're a musician like these three are musicians. Uh, and so we're going to get started today. We're going to show you how to do this. And this will allow you to really learn the text tool. So we're going to go to Photo P first. Once we go to Photo P, we're going to go to File. We're going to go to New. When we go to File and New, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see here the name of the project. This is going to be Type in Face and then your name after it. So if I'm going to put my name, okay, but you put your own name. Then for the height and, uh, and the width, the width and the height, make sure instead of PX pixels, you want inches instead. And you are going to choose very similar to what we did in the last project, 8.5. And then for the height, you're going to do 11. And the DPI, the dots per inch, you're going to do 300. A white background is fine, and then we're going to hit Create. Okay, so here's our new white page. The next step that you have to do is you have to go into Yahoo or wherever you find your images and you're going to look up the face of whoever you want to use. So in my case, let's just say, since I'm an older guy and I like hip hop, here we go, we're going to use Jay-Z. But when you look up the person, instead of just finding uh, photographs of them, we're going to make this project a little bit easier, save us a little bit of time. and what we're going to do is type in silhouette, okay, right here. And when you do that, you're going to get black and white versions of the person kind of already broken down for you. They still look like the person, but they're, but they're black and white, as you can plainly see right here on the, on the page, okay? So what I want to do now is I want to pick one that I think is going to work for me. Um, and honestly, that probably this one would be fine. This one happens to have a few of these like lines in between, but that's okay. I'm not even worried about that. So I'm going to use this one. So just like our last project, what we're going to do is we're going to pull apart this tab. So you can see Photo P in the background on the other tab. And we're going to take this photograph. We're going to click, hold, drag, and drop. Okay, so once we drop it, remember we go over to the layer. We double click. Call it uh, something you'll remember, like face or the person's name. Okay, And then you're going to right-click, as always, and you're going to rasterize. All right, once you've done that, we need to make the face bigger. So to make the face bigger, edit, free transform. There's that box. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to pull from the corner. I'm holding shift with my left hand while I pull with my right hand on the corner of that box to make it big like this to kind of fill the page. Okay, right about there looks good. Okay, good. Then at the very top of your screen, you can hit that little checkbox or you can hit enter on your keyboard. Okay, now that you've done that, the first step before you start typing and putting words in the face is that layer now that you just created, you have to lock it with this lock. So I'm going to hit this all lock. It looks like a padlock. And you see it put the little padlock right next to the layer. This way you won't accidentally mess up that layer in some way. You won't draw on it. You won't delete it. It's, it's there for you to be locked. You can always unlock it by clicking the lock again and it will go away. All right, next step. You are going to go over to your text tool here on the toolbar. You can see it says type tool. You can, get, you can click the letter T to get to it on your keyboard. So if I go to the text tool and I click on the text tool, You'll notice at the top of my screen, I'm just going to roll up to the top here. You have options across. This is called the options bar, and you have options for that text tool. So the first one with the little arrow is the different fonts that you have. And as you click them, see, comes up for us. Come on. 
Why is it not coming up? It doesn't want to come up for me. All right, so I don't. Oh, there we go. There we go. It was just taking a little while, but you have all these different fonts. We call these fonts or typefaces, uh, and you see them on this list here that I just clicked. So you're going to click one that you like. I would say for this project, the ones that are a little thicker work better. If they're too thin and scripty, kind of like this one, it's not going to work that well. So you want something better, a little thicker. I'm going to choose this one, Denk 1. All right, I'm going to click it. Then up at the top, you also have options like sometimes, depending on the font, you have bold or italic. And then uh, a good size to start, 150 px pixels uh, for the size of the text is fine. And then the color right next to it, you see I have that blue box. If I click the blue box, I can choose a color. Now you're going to want to choose a color that's not too dark. Uh, so I'm going to choose yellow just to start off with, and I'm going to click OK. All right, so I'm going to zoom in. Remember, Command Plus to zoom in. And I'm just going to kind of move over here. And, and the whole idea behind this project is in order to make it work and use the text tool and put letters inside the face, you're going to do them only in the black areas. Only in the black. So I'm going to be filling up these areas with words, with letters. Got it? So I take the text tool. I have my uh, font picked. I have my size picked. I have my color picked. All I do is I click one time. You'll see at the top it says loading, and there's that uh, cursor, and I start typing something in. Now, um, I could type in something about this person. I could type in lyrics from one of their songs. Any of that stuff is, is fine, okay? So like I could type in Brooklyn, right? And then after I type it in, after you type in the word, here's the step. It's very simple. You go to the layer, you right click and you rasterize. All right? You right click and you rasterize. Just to let you know how much control you have, you know, if you go back to the word, this is before you rasterize. You see, I can highlight it. So technically, I could get rid of a letter, change what it says. I could make one letter bigger if I wanted to or smaller. I can make more than one letter bigger or smaller at a time instead of the whole word. All you have to do is highlight it, and then you can change options about that thing that you just uh, typed in. You know, you can change those characters. Um, also over here, I'm going to zoom into this a little bit. If I click this, you see there's an option called character here. So we talked about this yesterday when we looked at typography and we answered those questions on the um, exit ticket. Uh, size, tracking, letting, right? So here's that tracking. So if I was to highlight this, I'm just going to show you here. If I was to highlight this whole word and then go to tracking, do you see here, if I change the tracking, you see how the letters break apart? If I bring the tracking down real far, now they're, real, they're, now they're like way too tight and they're overlapping each other. But you can adjust the tracking and the letting. That's if I had more lines uh, of text. But all of the stuff can be controlled here in the character tab. All right, I'm going to close it for now. I just want you to know that it's there and that it's possible. All right, next step. You go over to the layer that you just typed in. As soon as you started typing, it automatically made a brand new layer for you. So I'm going to click it. As soon as I click it, you see that the name of the layer automatically turns into whatever you typed onto that layer. And I would do one word at a time, by the way. If you do a whole sentence at a time, it becomes really hard to manage. So do one word at a time. Then right click, same as always, we're going to rasterize it. Now once you rasterize it, you can't go back in and change what it what you typed in. Understand? Uh, right now you see it has a T on it. The T means it's still a text layer, which means you can still go back in and you can highlight and you can change. But once you right click and you rasterize, you can't do that anymore. All right, so I rasterize the layer. That's all done. And now all I have to do at the top of my toolbar, you see I have my move tool right here. I can click right on this. I can move it wherever I would like. Somehow I just accidentally made a copy, which I didn't mean to do. Okay, So I can move it around wherever I would like, like this. 
But remember, I'm trying to make it fit into the black area and make it somewhat exciting, um, similar to what I showed you here. Oh, and you can even see, actually, on that page that I was just on, when I was looking up the Jay-Z thing, someone did the project here on a t-shirt. Do you see that? That's this, this is like exactly the project that we're talking about. All right, so you can see it could come out real nice, real good looking, but we, in order to get there, um, you're going to take these words and you're going to warp them a little bit. You're going to move them, twist them, turn them, scale them, whatever you got to do. So it works like this. After you typed it in and you rasterized it, you go to edit, free transform. You guys know that from the last project. And then from here, you could obviously make it bigger, smaller, stretch it from the top or from the bottom or the sides. You can right click and you have all of these options. You can distort it, do perspective with it, warp it, rotate it, flip it, all these kinds of things. So I'm just going to show you a few of them just to give you an idea. If I do perspective, for example, I click perspective and I pull from the corners. Look what happens. Looks like it's coming at us or like going away from us a little bit. I'm going to right click again. We're going to do warp this time. You see little boxes in here. Now I can pull and stretch. And then there's these little handlebars that come off. Warp is probably the most powerful one. And you can really twist it and move it so it fits your black area that you're trying to fit your letters into. All right. Then you hit the checkbox when you like it. All right. And then you take your text tool again and you go again, this time with a different, with a different word. Okay. And then you go to the layer, you right click on the layer, you rasterize it, you do edit free transform then you start to move it and you say to yourself well how can I make this fit in with the other word well you're gonna you're gonna resize it maybe rotate it perhaps move it a little bit now I would not let the letters you see right here I wouldn't let the letters touch each other but they can get very very close like that's good and then I want to stretch it out and you know warp it a little bit more. So maybe I'll right click and I'll warp. And then I'll sort of pull this one out like that. I'll maybe I'll move this like this. This one to the corner. All right. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now in the beginning. I'm going to have some gaps. I'm going to have some holes in between things, you know, like over here, there's some space. Over here, there's some space. Well, I could put anything else in there. I could put any other word, you know, in there. I could put, uh, you know, just even just the letter Z. Right click, rasterize, free transform, move it over here, resize it a little bit, hold shift if I want to. I don't have to, though. Right, um, right click, distort, try that one, try all of them, don't just settle on one of them and use the same one over and over, change it up a little bit, you never know what you could find by playing around a little bit. Alright, so you see what happened there? I was able to um, really give it a nice look and fit some things into it. And you're going to continue that way, you're going to fill it up as, as best you can like that until you have words filling up all of the black area only the black not the white and in this case there's some gray in this picture not the gray either just the black and by the time you're done you will have filled it up now if you want to check it and see what it looks like you go to the bottom of your layer stack right here and the uh, eyeball that's right next to the actual black and white picture all you have to do is click it and it'll show you what it looks like without it you see this here so you can see your couple of words, then you turn it back on, and you continue. The last and final thing is, if you have something that you like, that you used, and you want to use it again, you can. I wouldn't use it 50 times, but if you want to use it, you know, four or five times, that's fine. So for example, the layer that I have here that says Brooklyn on it, if I want to copy that layer, all I have to do is drag the Brooklyn 
layer like this down to the new layer button at the bottom right here. And now there's two of them. Now it still looks like there's one because they're right on top of each other. But all I have to do is take the move tool, which is that top tool on the toolbar, this one right here, right? This top tool. I just click and I drag. And you see there's another Brooklyn identical to the one that I used before. So I could use this anywhere I want. If I wanted to, I could do, you know, free transform. I could rotate this thing. I could go like that. I could, you know, it's really up to you the way you want to sort of do this. Um, and when you reuse it, you know, you're going to want to change it a little bit. Maybe warp it in a different way this time. Do a little something so it looks a little different than the one that you used before. So these come out real nice. It just takes a little bit of, uh, you know, time and, and, and patience to, to do it. And uh, believe me, after you do about five or ten of them, you'll start to get really fast with it. And you'll be able to fill it up pretty quickly. Okay, so that's the end of the video. That's the way that you do the project.